When I took this Nikon Z50 out to do some bird photography the last time, I got a real mismatch of results. Since then, I've made some changes to the camera as well as my technique, which has given me much better results. Find out what they are next. We've got a bit to get through in this video. I don't want it to run too long. So let's not mess around. Let's go straight to the setup that I've got on the Nikon Z50. Firstly, I ensure I have back button focus activated. To do that, you go to menu, pencil icon, autofocus, AF activation, select AF on only. Next, I'm going to assign my different focus modes to my FN1 button on the front of the camera. To do that, go to menu, pencil icon, controls, custom control shooting, select the FN1 button on the camera icon, then assign focus mode AF area mode. As you can see me demonstrating here, I do this because I can quickly select the focus mode I'm after by pressing the FN1 button and using the front wheel to scroll quickly to the focus mode I want. Okay, then step back to the camera and I like to assign the FN2 button to zoom on off, which is set to 100%. I do this because if I need to micro adjust my focus manually for whatever reason, I can zoom in on the bird without importantly taking my eye away from the viewfinder. It also helps me recognize the breed of bird I'm photographing too. You can also do this on the back screen of the Z50, but I found it was too hard to find and it was a little bit fumbly. And also sometimes it didn't respond to touch while my eye was up against the viewfinder. Okay, go back to the camera and ensure your AEL AFL button is set to AF on. What some of you may or may not know is that you can actually assign your movie record button a bunch of different settings while shooting in stills mode. I like to assign this to the different light metering modes so I can quickly change things according to the light I have. Again, without taking my eye away from the viewfinder. Now mainly I stick with matrix metering, but there are times I go for center weighted or spot metering. Just another couple of settings in case you were planning to shoot video of your birds like I do. Go to G Movie, AF Speed, I set to Faster plus five. And on the AF Tracking Sensitivity, I hit to High plus one. On the back of the Z50, you've got this little I button. Press that so you can see the settings on the back of the viewfinder. I make sure I'm shooting in AFC or Autofocus Continuous. Area mode to begin with is set to single point autofocus, but remember we can change this super quickly now with our FN1 assigned button. Frame rate is set to high plus. I like to shoot in manual, which gives me greater control over my shutter and aperture. And I leave my ISO set to auto with a range of between 100 and 6400. I also shoot in RAW plus JPEG, so I can adjust my images and post-processing easily, whether it's exposure, highlight, shadows, or white balance. Okay, so that's now the Nikon Z50 setup. I know for a fact that the birds are out in force here at the moment. We're right in the middle of spring. Let's go and give this Z50 a test run. As I did in my first Z50 bird photography video, I'm using the camera in conjunction with my Nikon 80 to 400 millimeter lens via the FTZ2 adapter. So when using the Nikon Z50, I find using the single point focus for either birds perched or walking on branches to be my go-to mode. You'll see in my technique here, looking through the Z50's viewfinder, I place the box over the bird's head while at the same time keeping my back button focus pushed in. I can track them through leaves and branches, and when I see an action or look the bird does that I like, I then fire away with my shutter button. For birds in flight, I tend to stick with either the wide area small or wide area large focus modes. Here's an example using wide area small. I have my box trained on this pigeon on my neighbor's roof and I can tell it's getting ready to take flight. Using a higher shutter speed over two and a half thousand and keeping my bird in the box while keeping my back button focus pressed, I track the bird as it takes flight. And as you can see, you've got to be pretty quick. A little post processing and cropping and this is the result.
These cute little double barred finches were in the process of building a nest. So I stalked them for a while and got these shots and clips of video. last video with the Z50 doing bird photography, you would have seen these silver eyes. They were still out and about, and I had a good laugh at these two that were in a stare-off at this little watering hole. It wasn't until one of their friends intervened to break up the fight that things cooled down. By the looks of things, this kookaburra was enjoying some afternoon sun while keeping an eye on the long grass for any snakes or other delicious meals. Now, while I was photographing those double barred finches before, I noticed something in my peripheral vision. Something was checking me out. When I turned quickly, it disappeared up into some branches. Look at this guy. I've never seen this bird before. Shiny with stripes on its body. This is one of the things I really love about bird photography. Photographing birds, which I have absolutely no idea what they are, but then I go home and search for their breed on the internet. In this case, it was a shining bronze cuckoo. This grey fantail was actually on a branch that was hanging close to the concrete pathway that I was standing on, and the light reflecting on the path acted like a reflection board for this shot. The lighting ended up almost looking like it was shot in a studio. Now these two little kingfishers had set up a home nursery using this termite nest on a tree. They kept darting back and forth very quickly between the branch just outside the opening to feed their little ones inside. Okay, now here's the thing. I was having a little bit of trouble getting these guys because they were moving in and out of that nest at ridiculously fast speeds. Mainly because I was so tight on the nest looking through the viewfinder, by the time I saw the bird coming into frame, I'd hit the shutter and it had already gone or was inside the nest. So what I did was I preset my frame and focus on the nest and using a higher f-stop for greater depth of field and I combined it with a higher shutter speed. So holding the camera very steady, I then just snuck my eye away from the viewfinder to the left of the camera and watched for when the kingfishers took flight from the branch. Now obviously doing this handheld is not the ideal. It would be much better using something like a monopod. But as soon as I saw those kingfishers take off from their branch, I'd hit the shutter button. Even though the wattle flowers are now starting to fade here, these rainbow beaters were still out gorging themselves on the bees coming from the flowers. Again, what I did here is use the exact same technique I used for the kingfishers. And as the birds left their favorite branches, I was ready for them when they came back with their catch. The yellow-tailed black cockatoos were still making a mess of things in these trees and I captured some shots while they were having a bit of a scratch and clean. Obviously the Nikon Z50 is no Z9 or Sony A1 when it comes to bird photography. It is a budget priced camera after all, but if you make some adjustments to the camera and adjust your style and technique to suit the camera's limitations, you can actually achieve some pretty good results. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and you picked up some tips with the Z50 doing bird photography. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.